Привет, Stalkers! My name is Darren Costumes, and this is some footage from Stalker 2 that you have not seen before. Well, who sent you? Richter? Or that asshole, Zorik? No one sent me. Guess today is your lucky day. And you might be asking yourself, how did Starion get this footage? Well, I was in Prague, at GSC Game World's offices, and I got to play Stalker 2. It's not the Gamescom demo, I got really to play the real game, and it was quite an experience. And whether Stalker 2 holds up to its promises or not, we will discuss in this video. Just a fair disclaimer for all stalkers out there, this video contains some spoilers. I'll put them at the very end of the video, so you guys can avoid them. Because you should. Stalker is always at the best when it's experienced for the first time. The first stalker experience is always the most immersive one. And I think you should do this experience just like I did at the GSC Game World offices. So, avoid the spoilers. As a YouTuber, I shouldn't even give you this advice, because the algorithm also needs the watch time. So if you want to support this video, leave a like, leave a comment, and join the Stalker Squad by subscribing to my YouTube channel, because we have already 1000 people in the Stalker Squad. And it's just less than one month that we can finally explore Stalker 2 together. We will be in the zone, guys. Can you believe it? I still can't. But I'm so glad that we are doing this together, and today we're starting with some fresh and delicious gameplay footage that is so good you wouldn't even believe me. So I'll just show you. This video is based on my experience of playing Stalker 2 and I have played Stalker 2 on different stages of development on different occasions. I've played it at PGA Pause 9, Gamescom 23 and Gamescom 24. So I have seen some serious changes and one thing that changed the most is the thing that bothered me the most at Gamescom 2023 and that's voiceover and facial animation. My emotions towards the facial animations of Stalker 2 at Gamescom 2023 are quite difficult to describe, but overall I would say that the facial animations and the voice acting combined were just a little bit off. They just didn't feel natural. But on Stalker 2 at the recent stage of development, this has changed. And I'm quite amazed to see how much detail they actually put in the faces of the characters. You can see like the teeth, the lips, you can see them speaking, you can even see the wrinkles on the lips and the eyes, and this is so amazing. This is the stage of gaming that we have achieved right now, and I'm glad that Stalker 2 will be running at Unreal Engine 5, but can provide such amazing graphics and animation. Also, the voice acting was quite good, and the translation to English and to German was also fine, at least based on the few hours that I have played the game. Overall, the voice acting is good, the music really catches the atmosphere of the zone, which is also very important, and the characters feel more natural. Still, I have to get used to that new detailed face mechanic, because you guys remember how characters in Stalker looked back in the days. There's only one thing that bothered me a little bit uh, regarding that. Um, it was the change from the idle animation to the speaking animation. So when you talk to a character at some point, when he finished talking, he would just be in, like, in an idle animation. When you then asked him something, he would start talking again and you would have this quick jump like this. This is like a very minor flaw that can be fixed easily. What I also truly appreciated is the new Sunrise Suit model. We have seen this in different screenshots and in videos, but I like the new model of the Sunrise Suit and I also like that they have different skins for the suits based on different conditions. So you finally see sunrise suits that are dirty and used and not like always clean and pristine. This is a very nice addition and especially I as a cosplayer fell instantly in love with this one. Furthermore, the world feels much more vivid now since it has more detail and you have more variations of low gear stalkers. You have a lot of stalkers that do not have special sunrise suits or special gear, but just like average gear that they use. So you can easily tell who is a more experienced stalker and who is just, you know, a dude who tries to survive in a zone. And while we are talking about the visuals, of course we have to talk about the graphics and the map. The graphics and the map are just breathtaking. It is insane. Wherever you go, there is something to see. The visuals are outstanding. The new anomalies beautiful 
the mutants well animated like even the dog when he attacks and turns around has a nice attack and turn animation instead of just like spinning around like in the original stalker games this is great and it feels much more alive the zone itself feels much more alive thus said there is no location that i regretted visiting every place that i visit was worth visiting not only because it was maybe linked to a side quest or because it has loot but because it just looks so insanely well made and i have no idea how many hours they spent into this map but it must be a lot because this map is huge i counted at least at least 23 24 different locations on the map that you can visit starting from good old classics like Yanov station also zulu's tower is still there um the cordon the great swamps um garbage and raider like both places are back also rostock is back of course and some other locations that i will just spoil at the end of the video let me just give you a little hint a little hint what will come of course if i use some cut content because whoever worked on this game is a true stalker like the guys from gsc game world are stalker fans and it's so insane because when i played the game at some point you just visit the cave where a dude has a stash and you can collect a reward there and while visiting the cave you can see this graffiti at the cave wall does this graffiti look familiar to you if it does let me know in the comments below and if you can translate it also let me know in the comments below still when i saw this i instantly knew whoever made this game played the original stalker series and that made me so happy sometimes i have the urge to just like sit down and enjoy the atmosphere and envy the beauty of the world around me when i play video games and stalker 2 managed to evoke this exact feeling for me i cannot complain about the visuals graphics are amazing world building is amazing that's it one of the things that i truly love about stalker 2 is the gunplay and at gamescom 2023 it was already good now i got the chance to try out more weapons and i can tell you that you have all your average starter weapons in the game you have the double barrel shotgun you have the viper 5 you have the ak's you have the makarov pistol whoever uses that thing but it exists and they all felt unique each gun had its own characteristics and each gun felt like something you have to you know learn to shoot for example in the original stalker trilogy i always felt like i just could shoot and it was more a luck thing whether I hit or not. But here in Stalker 2, I have the impression that I have to actually work with the gun to be a good shooter in the game. For example, to compensate for the recall of said guns. And this is something I really enjoyed because it gave the game a little bit more depth and also it challenges the player a little bit. Speaking of challenges, the difficulty of the game was alright for me. I played it on medium difficulty. There will be a easy difficulty and of course a high difficulty setting stalkers but on medium it was quite good the game was not too difficult but also when i became a little bit too brave it also was very unforgiving something the more stealthy players <laughs> implying they exist would truly like is the working stealth system because when my playthrough i could sneak up on enemies i could ambush enemies and that was quite cool because normally i don't even bother with stealth and stalker i just go in and clear buildings Something that makes it a little bit easier is that you have those markers that show you whether an enemy has spotted you or where your enemies are. And also you have the compass on top of the screen. This is something that I think more unexperienced players or players who just want to enjoy the story of Stalker will appreciate. For me, I'll probably turn that off in the final game and I'm quite sure that there will be an option to do that because you know, in the original Stalker games, you could also turn off the crosshair and you could also turn off the hut. So I guess this will be in it as well. Improvements have been made, especially when it comes to the combat mechanic of mutants. For example, Flash was never a threat. Like, they were easy to hit, they didn't do much damage, and they were also slow and easy to avoid. This changed in Stalker 2. The Flash has a new attack. They pounce onto you. They really just jump onto you and attack you and finally you have to actually do something to avoid them also poltergeists have a new defense mechanic they will just like raise a wall of debris when you start shooting them of course you can just like 
shoot it down after a few shots and then continue hunting them but still this adds new experiences for our stalkers because the mutants that we know are different now and i love it the story of the game the one point in this entire video i thought about how to discuss it without giving too many spoilers so i will just stay on a very superficial level and stick to the info that you guys probably already have we start playing as skiff we don't know much about skiff we just know there is a reason this guy can't go back to his past life and that for some reason he has to work for herman uh, at this point the beginning of the game is similar to the beginning of the demo on gamescom 2024 so this part of the game is actually canonic we start a skiff with the task to charge a scanner at different locations in the zone when we go there we trigger anomalies but for some reason it seems to be working and after a few attempts we managed to charge the scanner on our way through it we encountered different things especially a scientist's bunker that for some reason has been cleared out and people are dead we don't know why but it seems that something has gone terribly wrong and that some things are happening that uh, Herman would consider as unforeseen consequences still we managed to almost fulfill our contract but then something happens but we wake up and realize the scanner is gone and our loot is gone as well so the beginning of the game is just like the original stalker shadow of chernobyl experience you start with nothing i mean you still know who you are that's good but you start with nothing you have to work your way up in regards of gear and equipment and this is something i've always appreciated about the stalker games because the progression throughout the game is really something that you can feel that you can notice and i'm really curious how it will look in the other areas of the zone because this area that we are right now is called the lesser zone so i would be very curious to see how the greater zone looks like still we are this stalker and we don't know much about skiff we always get few snippets of information about him that for some reason make us curious we want to know more about skiff when playing the game we want to know who this guy is we want to know his backstory how did he get into the zone and i can tell you the zone is filled with story. For example, we meet Lance, a stalker who set up a workshop in a village in a lesser zone. But for some reason, he misses a leg. We don't know why, but we know it must have something to do with another stalker. Because when we go through the village, we find a letter, a note, that says that the other guy should come over and visit him and not be responsible for his condition. So it might be that he just like messed up or that he left him in the zone and thus Lens lost his leg. At least this is what I could recall from my memory a few days after playing the game. Those little side stories give us insight and one aspect of the life in the zone we have not seen too much in the past games. It is the social life of stalkers and the social structures. Sure, we know the average stuff about stalkers scamming or betraying each other or leaving someone to die, but this is something unique and different because this is not something that happened in the past. It happens right now and maybe we will be able to know more about this conflict and maybe even solve it. I have no idea. But I'm looking forward to it because, you know, I'm the more role player guy in the zone. I want to experience stock as a role play game and a shooter. And those little side quests, those little snippets of information just contribute to the immersion and this game is really immersive as it is speaking of immersion the atmosphere is great because things have changed it used to be great in the past but now something else has happened there is a new faction in the zone and this faction is much stronger than the other ones don't want the innocent to suffer then help me find the culprit and i'll just do so much this might be pretty interesting because we have a system of factions in the game i just don't know how it exactly plays out but the dynamics of factions will be very interesting and this can really stir up the gameplay a lot it will add a lot of dynamics and i'm curious to see how it will work out especially with having one big overlord faction that all ours have to deal with in many cases you need different puzzle pieces to put together the entire story but in Stalker 2, it is hard to tell who is right or wrong. And this is something I really enjoy. The zone, for me, was always a place of pure uncertainty. You don't know 
who is right or wrong. You don't know who you can trust or not. And Soccer 2 picks up on that quite well. In the first hours of gameplay, you don't know which characters are honest and honorable, and which ones are just thieves and scammers. That said, I didn't see Sidorovich yet. But he seems to exist. He's mentioned by one of the characters. Overall, we won't get rid of Sidorovich and the scammers, just like we won't get rid of the uncertainty in the zone. So sometimes you have to think if you want to interact, if you want to get involved in a situation, or if you just prefer to, you know, let the zone do its thing and mind your own business. That's life in a zone. Stalker 2 picks up quite well on that and forced me through several occasions where I was not sure whether I was doing the right or wrong thing. And overall, I guess I will just find out in my playthrough and probably regret something. We're heading towards the end of the video and there is one thing that I still want to talk about and that's modding. You guys told me that Unreal Engine is a little bit difficult to mod. I have no idea about that. I have never made a mod for Unreal Engine. But I have forwarded your concerns to GSC Gameworld and they told me that they will release modding tools as soon as possible after the release of the game. So yes, they want mods, they will enable you to make mods and all of you who are eager to do that, congratulations, you will have the tools for that. So what is my experience of playing Stalker 2? I played around 2 hours of the game and the footage that I showed you is footage from the game. This is not pre-rendered, this is how it looks like and overall I'm quite positive. The game looks amazing, the world is amazing, the atmosphere just breathtaking, it really catches you and you want to play more. It was very difficult for GSC Gameworld to get me away from the computer because I would have probably stayed the entire night and played. It's great, it is great fun. Still, there are some minor flaws that I would change. For example, I hope that you can customize the user interface and uh, the HUD. Also, I would love to have the option to decide myself whether I want to lean through a corner or not. Uh, the game does it right now automatically, just a minor flaw. In my entire playthrough, I encountered just one visual bug um, for a pre-release game that I played for two hours. That's quite good because I remember playing Metro Exodus on EGX in Berlin, asking them if the build is stable and they told me yes. And after five minutes, I fell through the map because I managed to mess up. So for some reason, I seem to attract bugs. Overall, it's good. And I'm really curious to see what the game will look like, especially with the new factions, especially with the new mechanics, especially with the new zone. If you guys watch the videos from It's Tummy Love, you probably have seen like one or two minor spoilers. Um, they were in the deep dive, you just had to be very cautious to spot them. But now come the big spoilers. I want to know what you guys want to see in the game. What have you seen that you liked? What is something that you would change? And also, what's your overall impression of the game after you have watched this video? Are you still hyped for it or are you a little bit more cautious now? Let me know in the comments below. So I guess that's a part of the video where I would ask you to leave a like, leave a comment and to join the soccer squad by following my YouTube channel. And also check me out my other socials because I have some amazing stalker photos on there. And I'll see you in the next video. So you're still here. Neugier is der Katze tot. But you're still there, so you will get your spoilers. The new faction are the Wards or the Warden. They are a large faction supplied with really military gear stuff. They have working APCs in the zone. And they are somewhat feared among stalkers. Uh, they're not openly hostile towards stalkers but their relationship is very tense and they seem to be some larger faction that actually oppresses free stalkers. First of all, the story of Stalker 2 draws you into betrayal. You notice in the Gamescom 2024 gameplay demo that several dead soldiers are on your way. These soldiers belong to the wards and they have little sensors on them. You, can, you could consider them as black boxes that record everything around them. These sensors were stolen, 
So some stalker, some group killed off those wards, took their sensors and ran off with them. And also the same people seem to be involved in the betrayal of you and the robbery of you that ended up taking away the scanner that Hermon gave you and the artifact that's inside. That's highly important for you. So you have to find those guys and thus you're getting dragged into the main story of the zone. And the story will be large because the zone, as I told you, has 24 different locations. Uh, some of the classics are in there, like the Cordon, the Great Swamps, uh, Yanov Station, Rostock. But some new things are inside. For example, Duga will be visible and visitable in the zone. Of course, Raider is there, which looks still very similar to the original one on the map. Just the one bunker is missing. And something that you guys will be pretty hyped about. It's the cut content. They included cut content from the original Stalker games. You will be able to visit the uh, vehicle graveyard or car cemetery. And also you will be able to visit generators. Yes, they included the generators north of the nuclear power plant. The entire map has been also reassembled. For example, uh, the greater swamps are now at the southeast of the map. Pripyat is, it, is at the northeast and it's also a little bit smaller than the original games. Uh, the generators are north and everything is just more oriented towards the real locations. Also, this area on the map up here, is still unknown, is probably the location of the new formed institute. It's a large complex with a large wall around it, so whatever they are, they have massive influence. And it's not clear which role the Institute has in the game. I guess they are right now more something of a watchdog faction that watches over the zone and replaces the military, but I'm not sure about that. And I would speculate that it's an international faction because all the watch posts and stuff have English writing on them, while our stuff in the zone is in Ukrainian. Also, I playing the game, I noticed the name Kaimanov. You guys, when you have really paid very, very strong attention to the original Stalker series, will know the name Kaimanov. One of the scientists drops this name when talking about the medical machine. It's a Kaimanov amateur. Maybe this guy is still alive. I have no idea. Also, take everything that I say with a grain of salt. I might get smaller details wrong. Things might change. My gameplay was several days ago. I was completely hyped and excited to be able to play Stalker. I could not memorize everything. Overall, this is a spoiler section. It's not too much. It's not a big spoiler. But for me, it would be something I would have rather not known. And I hope that this won't spoil the story too much for you. Overall, the world is so big and vivid that I highly doubt that my little spoilers here could ruin the gameplay for you. So. I hope that you guys will be as excited in the zone as I was when I got to play Stalker 2 for the first time in a free play mode without any borders, no demo, nothing. I could just roam around and check this amazing place out. And instead of giving you the usual outro that I give you in every YouTube video, I'll just show you the most beautiful location in the lesser zone that I instantly fell in love with and I'm sure you will too. The poppy field is just one of many beautiful locations in the zone but for me it was just truly breathtaking. I hope that you guys will enjoy it as much as I do. Before ending this video I just wanted to thank all of you stalkers who made this possible. A few years ago I was just a guy in a costume and I'm still a guy in a costume but I got to experience so many things that I'm so grateful for and that's thanks to you. Thank you stalker. You are the best community that I could have imagined and I'm so glad to be part of that. And now before I get emotional, let's just go into the poppy field and we'll see each other in the next video. Good hunting stalker.
where the icon is. 